following up on the idea of having your antenna up, you know, some of the areas that I especially try to tune into are sermons. You know, when I'm sitting there every Sunday morning and I've got my bullet in there, I usually have my, my journal, journal with me. And it's just always been a practice of trying to write a song in my head to what the pastor is teaching on. And, you know, if you're a little ADD, for one, it helps you focus a little more, be more concentrated. But as I'm listening to the pastor or the teacher speak, I find myself trying to cue in on any theme, any particular hooks. When I say hooks, like a, a lyrical hook, maybe there's a phrase, and I'll just write that down. And I, I kind of act, as, I act under the assumption that what if the pastor were to call me up after his message and say, Paul, I want, want you to teach a song on what I just preached on. Now, believe it or not, um, there have been many times where I felt like if this little song that was going on in my head felt strong enough, um, just again, with his permission, I would come up and say, you know, sort of as that closing song, say, you know, just wow, what a powerful word. And before we move on, just as, and as we close, why don't we just take kind of the core element of what Pastor was sharing, and here's a simple, just a simple chorus to kind of lock it in. I remember years ago, uh, just one of many, where um, just a simple thing. It's not, a, it's not an un, yeah, a complete song, but it was, though we, are, though we are many, we are one body in Christ. You know, that scripture in the New Testament. So I was picturing sort of this reggae thing, and you know, it's not the kind of thing that makes you, it doesn't feel like a dark idea. It's like, hey, though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's sing it. And though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. And then the band, you get and it was real reggae, and it was real kind of up, because the message was kind of up and encouraging. And we just had fun, and it was just a little short chorus, but that's just one of many times where I'm just writing a song in my head during the sermon, and I just think that's a, that's a no-brainer. Just kind of keep, just, just, I give you that as a homework assignment. Just always be writing a song in your head to the sermon or the teaching you're listening to. I've actually sat down with various, uh, like Graham Kendrick and I, when we've written together, we t we'll take a teaching tape then listen to about 30 minutes of a good teaching and then just take some of the concepts and write down some of the main ideas and then go ahead and kind of take some of those strong elements and form a song idea. Because let's face it, to just sit down and write a song, it's too broad. So it really helps to just begin eliminating some things some, some themes and subject possibilities and really begin to hone and focus on like the mercy of God or the kingdom of God or the grace of God, whatever the theme is or a particular aspect of who, who the Lord is. So sermons, pay attention to that. Another big one for me is paying attention to prayers, paying attention to the prayers of other people, paying attention to your own prayers. I mean, if I had to summarize this whole talk on songwriting, like right now, I would just say, okay, sing your prayers. I mean, literally, that would be my ultimate assignment for you is to, don't even try to write songs, just sing your prayers. And I'll probably say that a lot throughout this discussion on songwriting because I think the best worship songs come from an authentic, honest heart that's praying, that's trying to connect with God, that's not thinking about writing a song. <laughs> you know, it's not about writing a song. It's about trying to just sing a prayer that's authentic, and that's where the best worship songs come from. So, man, I could go on and on. Um, just the prayers of others. Uh, there was this one guy that was like a father in the Lord to me. I used to follow him around. He did home meetings, Dr. Bruce Morgan. And many times in, in the earlier years of my walk in the Lord, 
he would begin meetings, his, his times of teaching with, okay, let's pray. And he'd, and he'd say, Lord, as we begin looking into your scriptures tonight, we just pray that you would open the eyes of our hearts and that you would give us understanding and wisdom. We just pray in Jesus' name, amen. And I don't know, I just always been a note taker. So I would be like, huh, open the eyes of our hearts. I just love that honest cry of the heart. But man, you know, so, so all of a sudden, you know, during worship times or prayer times at the church, you know, where people are getting prayed for and it's after service and you're just kind of, as a guitarist, you've played pretty much every song you know in the key of E. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Because E is just the, the ultimate guitar key. It just has all these strings ringing out. But a lot of times I'd run out of songs and then I just think about little, little phrases. And that was one that would just stick with me. I'd say, God, open our eyes, Lord, as we just seek you this morning. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. God, we want to see you. We want to see you, Jesus. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Mm, we want to see you. We want to see you. And I would say literally, maybe for months, you know, Maybe once here and then two weeks later, I'd bring that up. It was just sort of a phrase that I would just kind of pull out and sing as, as a prayer. And um, it didn't dawn on me until, you know, months later that I thought, man, that, that almost feels like a song. Like, maybe I should sit down and really work on that. And what else could you say? You know, what would be a good B section? Um, you know, let's see. Um, okay, I want to see you. And I'm thinking, who saw the Lord? in the scriptures. I'm thinking, okay, well, Isaiah saw the Lord. He said, I see the Lord, and he is high and lifted up, and the train of his robe is filling the temple. And so I was like, huh, okay. Uh, you are high and lifted up, and the train of the robe of your robe is filling the temple. I just felt like, ah, I don't, not so much, but I like high, high and lifted up, shining. And again, that's where you sort of, you know, you're trying to just get there in a prayerful, spiritual place using your spiritual imagination and trying to imagine seeing the Lord, like sitting at his throne and just, you know, almost virtual reality, you know, just like, wow, what would that be like? Just high and lifted up and you're shining in the light of your glory. And, and during that time, we were praying for God to move in our church and move in revival and stir hearts, so it just seemed natural. God, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. So anyway, just kind of give you an example. Maybe you have little prayer ideas, prayer phrases like that. Just worship with them, pray with them. Um, Kind of see where they where it wants to go. Another thing is just going to prayer meetings. Uh, my church is near Teen Mania. It's near a big YWAM base, Youth with a Mission. So there's a lot of young 20-somethings that are just kind of pursuing the Lord. They're zealous for God, and they, man, they have these prayer meetings where they're just, um, you know, maybe that's not your style. Maybe you're from a conservative uh, background or tradition, and yet you you want to write songs and just. Don't don't be too proud to, to go to that church down the street, you know, where they're maybe uh, a little bit, you know, out there, or you know, they're just kind of like very expressive. And, but man, go hang out. And that's where I would just hang out at the back of these prayer meetings, and I'd have my journal with me, and I would just ah, uh, just glean from the hearts of some of these kids and some of these people that would just be like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you know. And uh, one particular meeting, I led worship there, and. Uh, and, and they were starting to praise things out after the worship time. They were just praying, God, send your fire, Lord, send your fire. And, then a few and I'd write that down in my journal. And then somebody else a few minutes later would say, God, God, we just pray for revival, Lord, revival. And God, as we lift up your name, God, let your fire fall in this place. And God, just pour out from heaven your passion. And I'm just pouring, you know, so I'm just writing down all these lyrics. And, don't feel like that's unspiritual. Part of me was like feeling guilty, like, oh man, I should be praying. But, but I was like, you know what? I'm just writing down these things. And it was like capturing the hearts 
of God's people and recording it. You just think about the, the Bible is full of, somebody had to write this down. I mean, when Miriam was prophesying or Moses was prophesying, somebody had to be writing this down, right? So kind of see yourself as a scribe and write down these things. So as the meeting was going on, the prayer meeting, in my head, I'm kind of hearing a melody. And at the end of the service to close, I just went up at the end and said, hey, um, hey guys, as we close, just some of the things we were praying, um, Let's try this simple uh, prayer idea. As we lift up your name, God, let your fire fall. And eventually when Lord, pour out from heaven your passion and presence. Bring down your burning desire. Father, let revival fire fall. Oh, revival fire fall. Anyway, and just the chorus went on. Very short chorus. But it just felt like in the moment, like a God thing, you know? Just, I didn't know, I didn't think, like, someday this will be on a CD, or maybe someday this will be a... No, it's just thinking, like, thinking more like, how can I just take this simple prayer idea, put it in a song form that others can sing and so we ended up, you know, and in the prayer meeting, they kind of did almost, you know, like a prayer, like a prayer ch train, like picture, you know, almost like, oh, yes, Lord. And they were like, you know, walking around and it sounds crazy. But again, it's like, I just so appreciated their desire to try to press into God. And, um, and I felt like it was a way to serve that situation, which is a big component that I want to weave all through this discussion on songwriting is we are we are servants with our songwriting it's not you know if you want to be an artist and do all that that's cool there's a place for being a songwriter singer songwriter artist thing but if we're writing songs for worship all throughout the process we are thinking that man, how will this serve and how will this help people connect with the Lord oh, just one more song comes to mind I just remember going to a, a liturgical church and there's a lot of, you know, sp spoken prayers that were in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, you know, in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I thought, man, that's, that's, that'd be a great just kind of song opener kind of a thing, you know, and that's where our God saves, just the beginning of that, just taking a, a simple prayer, liturgical prayer, and, and just going... In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. So again, even spoken prayers, liturgical prayers, every situation, have your antenna up and just go, huh, I could see singing that, I could see singing that as a congregation. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing. 